Hey everybody, I wanted to give everybody a quick update on what I've been up to. Um, I think on my last video my truck was on the uh, car trailer. I was getting ready to take it down for exhaust. Um, that's done. The exhaust did get put in. Uh, after I got that back from the exhaust shop, I went ahead and come inside for a little bit and I laid off all of where the gauges and climate control and vents and all that was going to be to make sure I had enough real estate to put everything in there that I needed to put in there and make sure, especially over here with the tack, because there's two steel beams going through here on each side of this and they're mounted to this inner structure here to hold the steering column and everything up. I wanted to make sure that the, the tack was the only gauge that I had to put where I put it and I wanted to make everything as far as like this vent symmetrical with where this vent here was and then I just you know kind of split the difference on everything else and made everything kind of level and but what will end up happening is um, after I get done with the back ass of the truck, I will take the column out and the console out and the seats out and pull the floor pans back up for one more time and go ahead and squirt some primer around all these joints and stuff. Especially the ones that are underneath here that this is actually sitting on. And then I'll go ahead and lay these back in, click them back in and go ahead and stitch weld them all back in and the wings back in stitch weld them and along the front of the transmission tunnel and all that and get that all done and ready for seam sealing. Um, that's about it for the inside. That'll happen here pretty shortly. Uh, like I said, I did get the exhaust put on and to my surprise they were able to squeeze Flowmasters under there which is great. I didn't know if they were going to use a cylinder type muffler and uh, cross it over and run the exhaust through the uh, running board splash shaper. I didn't really know what they were gonna do. I took it down there and said, just put exhaust on it. You guys put it where you need it to be and I'll avoid where you go. And that's pretty much what we did. Um, they did a very good job putting it on. It exits right out here on each side of the fuel cell. They split the difference there. They uh, Both sides are mirror images of each other. Uh, they got down here and made it so uh, it cleared all the steering, um, all the shift bell crank and my oil filter. I don't take the exhaust off to do the oil filter because they come out and went immediately outboard and then aft and they avoided everything like the uh, power brake booster and all that. Um, as you can see, the other side is a pretty much a mirror image of what they did over here. So that's cool. I'm glad they did. Now, was, was able to put Flowmasters on because I like Flowmasters. But that created some problems, some real estate issues on uh, as far as where I was going to put my batteries. Or bat well, it actually started out to be battery but due to the fact that I didn't want to go out and buy an old Coca-Cola cooler and mount the battery inside of that, I opted to go with two six volt optimal batteries uh, wired in series to have 12 volts of starting power. Uh, once the truck started, everything will run off the alternator. So that's the plan. Um, that over there, those two beams there, used to go clear across here and tie the, the whole bed together. It's kind of like a torque box for my bed. It's welded to, welded to the bed. And then I picked up a forward and aft mounting location. So what I did was, in order to mount this stuff in here was, I went ahead and welded a big gusset in there on both sides. Then I welded, come in and welded some tubing in there on both sides. Both sides are the same. And uh, then I cut those bars out that connected the two. And then I mounted these uh, battery boxes, these six volt Optima battery boxes to the frame from underneath. 
and the same with the transmission cooler. All of this is serviceable from underneath the truck, so the bed would should, should not have to come out if there was a failure here. Uh, same with the fuel cell. I did the fuel cell the same way. Uh, made it so it can be removed from underneath without having too much trouble. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Uh, when you get, to take the fuel cell out, when you get it out, you're going to know you've been somewhere. But anyway, yeah, that's the plan. Do the six volt off of the batteries, and you know, and I'll put probably somewhere along the side of the truck, I'll put a uh, cord for battery tender so these can be uh, trickle charged to try to maintain their life and make them last a little bit longer because instead of buying a $120 battery, you have to buy a $143 battery twice. Even though they uh, last a little bit longer, it's still kind of a pain, kind of expensive. Uh, I did go ahead and bend up a shield, scatter shield for the uh, rear differential and the drive shaft so it doesn't sling stuff all over the transmission cooler. And it also bolts down from underneath. Uh, then we go back here, and this is where I'm at on the roll pan. Part of the deal. It's actually turning out to look a little bit better than what I thought it would, because I really didn't have any idea. I know when I originally mounted it on there that this end here stuck out about oh, eight, nine inches. This part here is actually for like a uh, I don't know, 88, late 80s, uh, square body style S10 pickup. So that's where what this part originally started out as. What I ended up doing was cutting it off where I wanted it and re-welding the ends back on because I wanted the radius. And I had to, of course I had to section it because as it comes in it gets wider so I had to weld in about a half inch there to put the ends back on both sides and then I bent this piece here on my brake this piece here and put a return flange on it and welded it on there to cover up the frame part of it and the side shields that's gonna finish it out on the sides is actually this is actually what it is. This is like the test piece for where the bins needed to be. Uh, kind of goes like that. Bing. Um, that's what the profile that looks like. It has a return flange down below. Um, what my goal was was to have you know about an eighth here and about an eighth here and tight here because the bed is going to sit on an eighth inch of rubber so its water line is going to increase by an eighth inch so that way when it's all said and done, there should be roughly about an eighth inch gap all the way around there. And that's the plan right now. Um, I did pick up a mounting for the forward part of this part uh, for the fender behind this brace. So that's where it's connected there. And what's gonna happen here on this corner is, I'm thinking of I'm going to try to maintain this gap along here where it starts to come up and then stop it here, you know, and fill this in. Uh, and then I'll re weld a flange, return flange on this back here and catch this. So when you look at it from the side, you don't you see nothing but return flange. And that will finish the corner out and then that will give it an even gap along it. And then you'll see it start to come up and follow the radius up. So that's the goal there. Um, this here was an add-on deal. I decided to go ahead and fabricate a cover for the fuel cell to get rid of the side of the fuel tank and the straps and all that ugliness down there. And it'll be painted the same color as the rest of the truck. And it actually picks up, I don't know if you can see that or not, it actually picks up a couple, two mounting holes for the straps. And then, of course, the exhaust is going to come out in roughly in these areas here. And I'll have to come back inside here and cut this off. I have to move this exhaust mount aft 
back here a little bit and I don't know that yet until I get the exhaust tip that I'm going to use. I'm going to have, I saw one at the muffler shop that I have to go back and get yet. And this, I'm going to get a couple more of these straps because the straps going to have to move over here. And I think what I'll end up doing is scooching this a little bit farther away from the fuel cell and coming out over here a little bit more, changing this center line over here a little bit more. Do that on both sides. And then I'll probably, once once I plasma cut the hole in here, I'll come back in and with a spindle sander and uh, gap it about 3 16 of an inch, maybe a quarter inch all the way around the exhaust tip. And then I'll get, one, I'll take this back off again and then I'll weld a flange, return flange on that all the way around on the inside. Uh, my goal is to have it almost flush at the top and then whatever it is at the bottom, it is at the bottom. But that is the plan so far. But that is what it's looking like. Uh, I also kicked around the idea to make a uh, LED brake light that I can put in here, a 12 inch brake light that I could put in down here or up here if I wanted to. Haven't really figured that out yet. We'll see. But anyway, guys, that's what it's looking like. And I forgot to mention this here will be a permanent a part of this. This will get all welded in here on both sides. This will, all the corners will be finished out. That should be on the next video. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's where I'm at. I appreciate you guys liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching. Have a good one. Bye.